I did use some wet chasel and made some pad stickles with my reusable pads. How much of a nerd do I sound like right now? Anyways, hello and welcome to this video. My name is Becca. If you're new here, if not, welcome back. Usually I do all sorts of vlogs about our life here in New Zealand because we moved here. We love it. It's great. But today I'm going to be talking about <laughs> the whole postpartum period and what I wish I had known for my first one and kind of how I'm preparing for the second one because I am 31 weeks pregnant. So nine more weeks to go and then, yeah, I'm gonna be going through all of that fun stuff again. <laughs> this video is going to cover kind of two aspects of the postpartum period and what to deal with, but it's gonna be about the physical, like what you physically need and what physically is happening and then the mental aspect of it because I feel like that is a lot of the stuff that I didn't know about and the stuff that I wasn't prepared for and that kind of took me by surprise. So first, let me start out by saying that there is nothing beautiful or glamorous about this period. It sucks. Like it's fine and it's worth it because you just have this beautiful baby, but it's not very pleasant. And the second thing that I wanted to make a comment on is just how a lot of like the company and the consumeristic side of it tries to put a lot of the focus on the baby. The baby needs nothing. The baby needs food, it needs diapers, it needs some clothes, and it needs you. Like it needs comfort and love. Other than that, <laughs> like they're golden. They need nothing, especially those first few weeks. You on the other hand, you need some goods. So let's just jump right in. I'm gonna start with the physical side of stuff first. So I think the number one biggest thing that I advocate for is just give yourself the time to heal. It takes a long time to heal. I <laughs> thought that I was just gonna like roll right out of bed, be able to go and do pretty much everything, you know, like take a few days and then heal up like it's from a scratch or something. No, you are so sore. You are so raw. It's not even overly painful. It's just frustrating. I just remember being so frustrated. Like I would just be sitting and I would just be uncomfortable because your pelvic floor just had a baby rip out of it. And so it's just so, it needs time to come back together. The muscles need time to like re-knit. Usually you do have some sort of like tearing or cuts or open raw things that need a lot of time to heal. And it's not just a scratch. Like it is pretty heavy duty healing, especially if you have a C-section. Oh, whole different story. Don't worry about picking up the house. Don't worry about anything. And this is the other thing that goes along with that is have your support system. And I get so frustrated learning about these other cultures that will like put the mom and the baby in a special care place for like 60 days or the whole village will help step in and like take care of the whole family. Because in America and like our situation, we live in New Zealand right now. We have no family here. Like we don't have that kind of support. So the support for me, what that looks like is I sit on the couch and I recover and I heal and I take care of and feed the baby. And my husband does all of the rest of it. He does all the diapers. He does all of the washing and the cleaning of the house. He does all of the food. This time is going to look a little bit different because we do have a toddler this time. <laughs> so not sure how that's gonna work out. But I think the biggest thing that he's going to be doing too is just like taking him out and taking care of the toddler so that I, again, don't have any of that burden on me because my burden is healing and taking care of the baby. Again, I cannot stress this enough. So some actual things that I recommend. Everybody loves the haka for good reason. It's just great. I used one my first time. I didn't use any other kind of pump because I think that would have led to a really big oversupply for me, but I did use the haka to just catch the let down and then just having some sort of like little baggies to put it into. I think I was given like some Medela breast milk storage bags. And so I just put it in that, would mark it and put it in the freezer. I had a nice little freezer stash and I didn't have to do any kind of extra pumping or anything just cause so much leaking. The other thing <laughs> that I do recommend are breast pads. I like the reusable ones. I think I had the kind, they're called bamboobies. They're great. I mean, they're all pretty much the same. I would say disposables are a great option too, but I've actually heard not so great things about them. I don't know. You can do what works best for you. But what I find funny is that like I bought myself a box and it, I just got so many. I feel like I ended up with like 300 reusable breast pads. <laughs> you need like probably 10. <laughs> but yeah, you leak. You, you pour liquid out of your boobs for a good chunk of time. It's annoying. I hated it, honestly. Um, but yeah, the breast milk pads are great for that. Next thing you're gonna want is some sort of nipple cream. If you are breastfeeding, I feel like no matter what they say, you know, they all say like, oh, if you're doing it right, it shouldn't be painful at all. I had a great breastfeeding journey. It was pretty much completely seamless. My nipples still were chafed and sore. You have something munching on them like hours of the day. So 
I, yeah, I don't know. Like, I didn't have any sort of cracked nipples or, like, bleeding or anything going on. However, I did still want something to soothe my aching nips. So uh, there's all sorts of like nipple butters and nipple creams out there. And I think the hospital sent us home with some like lanolin cream, but my lactation consultant just said use coconut oil. And so I did. And yeah, it was just a nice barrier that kept them moist. And then it's also great because the baby can eat it and it's a totally fine thing for them to ingest. So some sort of nipple cream to put on your aching nips is a good idea. This one is golden. I don't know how I would have done the first few days without it. It's a peri bottle. Most hospitals will give you one. They're, it's just a little squirt squeezer bottle. And they have fancy ones that go in like a, a, a V at the end so you don't even have to like angle it up. I mean, whatever. But basically all that is there for is because you don't want to be wiping your nether regions because they are ripped open and raw and just not a fun place to be. For the first few days, you just get your little squirt bottle and every time you go to the bathroom, you just squirt everything clean. You get some toilet paper and you just dab, 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 and then you are good. So like no wiping, no harsh motions, <laughs> gentle caressing. Okay, moving on. Another thing that I really try to focus on postpartum is nutrition. So I pass this off again a lot to my husband because he does all the cooking for us when we have a brand new baby. But you are so hungry after you give birth. At least I was. Like breastfeeding, I was ravenous. I would eat so much food. And you just want it to be really like nice, wholesome, nourishing food because your body just went through something traumatic and you also just lost a lot of stuff. You lost a lot of blood. You lost an organ. You lost a baby. I don't know. Also, you just grew a baby and an organ. So it's like, you just want to really nourish and take care of your body for everything that's just gone through. So I try to eat really like whole, nutritious, beautiful foods. Next one for me is comfy clothes. I just accept the fact that I'm going to look like trash for a few weeks. <laughs> I wore just the most atrocious things. One, you're scared that you're gonna bleed and like you get throw up, you get breast milk, like you drop food all over yourself, all over your baby, like you're just, you're gross. Shower often and have lots of good comfy clothes that you can change into often. It's not a time to be trying to look fab. <laughs> and like I know for me, my boobs were just so giant and my nipples were so sore. I didn't wear a bra for like weeks. Some women go the opposite way and they say that it's comfortable for them to wear a bra. No. So yeah, get your comfy clothes all lined up and ready to go. And um, maybe don't plan to go to any big parties or anything the first few weeks. <laughs> so your pad diaper situation. I used the diapers that they gave us in the hospital. They're great. They're beautiful. They do the job really well. And then I had s some reusable pads that I had like handmade. They were really big. They absorbed a lot. It was great. So I use that and really it's just a preference thing. Some people like to wear diapers for several days after just because it makes you feel nice and secure and it definitely will catch everything. I know some women prefer to just get the like giant disposable pads, whatever works. Just know that you're gonna be bleeding a lot and you're gonna want something to catch it all. Next thing that I have on my list that a lot of people will use is pain relievers. So like some kind of ice packs or like heating pads or stuff like that. I didn't find that I needed anything like that but it is a pretty recommended thing. Another recommended thing that I, again, I didn't use, but like I've heard it so often that I'm adding it to this list are stool softeners. Yeah, everybody that I've heard on the internet is like, oh, don't stop taking your stool softeners even a few days after you give birth just because <sighs> pooping is, is scary. It's scary. I didn't, I had like a first degree tear. It wasn't even that bad. It's still scary. Like Ugh, your pelvic floor is just a mess. <laughs> yeah, if you are taking them to begin with, just don't stop and maybe take them if you have any kind of like constipation issues because that sounds like the worst. So next is some kind of like spray or witch hazel, some kind of like numbing thing to make your lady bits feel better if they get to be too painful. So I know that when I left the hospital, they actually sent us home with some spray. I don't even remember what it's called. I didn't really use it just cause I was kind of weirded out by it. I did use some wet hazel and made some pad sickles with my reusable pads. Like how much of a nerd do I sound like right now? Anyways, but yeah, witch hazel is great. It's really natural and it has just a really soothing and kind of numbing effect. Maybe get yourself a little bottle of that if you're interested. 
Again, I didn't really use them for that long. I think I used them for like maybe two days and then I was like, this isn't worth the fuss. But who knows, I might be in a lot more pain this time around than the first, we'll see. <laughs> Next thing that I totally recommend is some sort of good carrier or stroller situation. Because once you do feel up for going on little walks, it's amazing. Like the baby, nine times out of 10, loves being outside. Like it's really soothing for them. It settles them really well. And it's also just so nice <laughs> to get out of the house and like get some fresh air and see the sunshine again. And yeah, I loved my little postpartum box that I did, but it just makes it so, so nice if you have like a nice stroller that you can put the baby in, they're all comfy, and then you can go on your nice walk. Same thing with a carrier. Although I feel like for those first couple weeks, I'd probably have my husband put on the carrier with the baby. But anyways, just figure out what you want. I'm doing both a carrier and a stroller this time. I did with the first one too. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> the next thing that you're going to want, and this is for the baby, not for you, but some sort of sleeping situation for them. I, when I got home from the birth center with my first, I was not planning on bed sharing or co-sleeping or anything like that. However, I was not comfortable <laughs> with how my baby sleeping situation was set up. And so we actually just switched really quickly like that day we had a floor bed and so we just like rolled that out and then we all slept in a floor bed together and yeah there's a lot of other factors that went into that decision but that's what worked for us just make sure that you have some safe place for your baby to sleep when your first night at home comes because there's a, a lot of anxiety built around baby sleep because they're just so scary <laughs> so yes just do yourself a favor and uh, honestly have a few options is what I would recommend. The last physical thing that I have on my list is all about breastfeeding because you're going to be doing so much of it. It's absurd. So think cozy, think comfortable, and think convenient because I know for me when I was breastfeeding, I was always thirsty, I was always hungry, and my back always hurt. <laughs> so set yourself up for that. I know a lot of women will have like little snack baskets where they have things that they can eat one-handed and like open one-handed while they're breastfeeding. And always make sure that you have like a couple water bottles at your different stations because you're so thirsty. And the worst thing is not having water when you're stuck and the baby's latched and you can't move and you're just dying of thirst. And the other thing too is like, with my back being so sore all the time is because I wasn't smart enough to get pillows and like have them in the places that I breastfed a lot. And so I would, I would just be like hunched over and like holding my son up, not ideal. Just have a bunch of pillows around so you can shove under and prop the baby up so that you're not holding them because it's, it's a lot, it's a lot of breastfeeding. <laughs> Okay, so moving on to the like good to know, kind of the more mental aspect of postpartum. Cause I feel like these are the things that, yeah, they just came to me by surprise. They're a little bit shocking. If I had been warned about it, it just makes it all a lot better. So the first thing again is about breastfeeding. I did not know this, I don't know how, but your milk comes in like three days after you start breastfeeding. I kind of knew that, but what I didn't know is that your boobs get so big. They just grow. And with that, the whole time I was at the birth center, I had a great time breastfeeding. Like he would latch on really well. It was wonderful. And then I went home and then my milk came in and my boobs were just like so big and engorged. And I had such a hard time latching him. I was scared. I was nervous. I was like freaking out. Yeah, I couldn't get him to latch. And I was like, what is happening? I don't know. But then I got on a phone call with a lactation consultant and she was like, oh yeah, this is what's happening. It's totally normal. And it only lasts 24 hours. If I had known that, I wouldn't have freaked out. But it's just one of those things. You're just so emotionally strung those first few days. So just heads up about that. So you don't get surprised like me. Next is no to look for signs of postpartum depression, anxiety, and rage. Because yes, rage is one of them. I didn't have any of them. Like I was I was pretty anxious, but I would not say that I had postpartum anxiety. This is all good things to talk about with your healthcare provider. But essentially you just have such a huge hormone dump. I just, <laughs> I remember the first couple of days coming home from the hospital. I just cried over the most nonsensical things and it's fine like that's that's normal what you need to know is like the line that crosses from like oh i'm feeling kind of anxious about this thing to i have postpartum anxiety and the same with the depression it's like oh i'm crying a lot and there's no reason why like that that's normal but there is a line that is crossed where it's like i have postpartum depression so just again know the like signs and symptoms of those three conditions the next thing I wish I had known is that healing is not linear. This one frustrated me 
so badly <laughs> because you go home and you know, you have a lot of bleeding. It's normal, it's fine. I would go a few days and then it was like, I would kind of stop bleeding. I was like, oh, wow, this is the end. I'm almost done with my bleeding. And then the next day would come by and then it was just like a waterfall. And I would just get so frustrated and, and start thinking like, this is never gonna end. But of course it does. And it's just, again, it's not a linear thing. It is weird, healing is weird. <laughs> the other thing with that is I thought that I would be pretty much back to 90% like a week after I gave birth. No, <laughs> absolutely not. It takes weeks and weeks to feel back to being like 90%. And then the other thing too is I thought that I was never going to be the same. I thought that I was never gonna get back to that 100%. You do, you do eventually. It just takes months and months instead of just weeks and days that I was kind of expecting. But that is a really nice thing for me mentally going into this one. Like I know that it just takes an actual long time to heal. Like your body just went through something so traumatic. So give it nice time and good grace. Anyways, going with the idea of you just had a, a new baby and life is so strange and different, just know that everything goes in phases. I think that's the biggest lesson I learned from having my first because you get into a certain phase and it feels like you're going to be stuck in that forever and that this is your life now and nothing, nothing is going to change from it. But <laughs> the phases actually go by so fast. So if you're going through a period of time that you do not like with your baby or your toddler, just know that it's a phase and they go through them so quickly. Like for an even smaller example of a phase of something that again kind of took me by surprise is the witching hour. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> it's essentially just an hour or three that they just sit there and scream and cry and nothing will console them. Like nothing is wrong with them. They're just screaming. They just won't stop screaming. And usually this happens in like dusk or like evening right before bedtime. I've heard a great tip that you can try to get them to bed before that, but I didn't know that I would just, yeah, me and my husband would just take turns trying to comfort him and keep him as happy as possible. And then, yeah, he would just stop crying. But that only lasted like a few days, maybe a week, and then it's over. But I remember getting so anxious and worked up about it because you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to deal with this for the rest of my life. No, it's a week. It's a week and then it's over. <laughs> Another fun thing that I, I actually was warned about this and I'm so glad, but babies breathe so weirdly. Like it's, it's scary and it's strange. But I mean, I guess it makes sense. They just came out into the world. They're actually using their lungs for the first time, but their little breaths, they're, they're just freaky. So just know that. Maybe go try to look up some YouTube videos of like weird baby breathing that is totally normal. So it doesn't catch you off guard and you don't freak out and stress out about nothing. <laughs> the next is to just try to expect the unexpected, <laughs> which is not very helpful. But everybody's postpartum is going to look different. Like some women have like awful night sweats and they just like wake up in a puddle of sweat. Some women have really, really bad like migraine headaches after having a baby. Others have a really hard time breastfeeding. So it's like everybody's journey is going to look different. And my postpartum experience with my first is probably gonna look different with my second. And so me sharing my experiences might help in some regards, but also just know that there might be some extra fun surprises thrown in there for you. <laughs> this one is much easier said than done, but try not to stress about everything. <laughs> I feel like, especially in the world of like Instagram and YouTube and the internet in general, it's like, we have so many specialists and experts out there that are trying to tell you, oh, you need to have your baby sleep this way and you need to do this model of like eat, play, sleep or whatever it is. And there's so many things that you have to do right in order to have like the perfect baby. I'm doing so many air quotes right now because it just makes me so mad. But especially in the beginning, there's nothing that you can do that will ruin your baby. I breastfed my son to sleep a lot in the beginning. I held him while he slept a lot in the beginning because I was just soaking in how adorable he was and I loved him so much. And I was like, I should put him down while he's taking this nap. And I just remember my mom was like, you don't need to. Like, this is such a short fleeting time. Take advantage and like soak up all the cuddles that you can. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to have another little one. But yeah, like just don't, don't worry about that because you will not ruin or spoil your child by breastfeeding them on demand or by holding them for some naps. Yeah, just love your baby. <laughs> That's all that they want from you. Another fun one that took me by large surprise because I swear I'd never even heard of it. <sighs> postpartum hair loss. <laughs> now that I have gone through it, I feel like I see it a lot more on the internet and like I can I can look 
and see moms that have just had babies and I can see the like telltale signs. But for me, it was gnarly. Like I had two little bald spots right here. I lost so much hair. <laughs> this is gonna be gross, but I had this like giant hairball because I didn't wanna leave hair lying all over the place. So I just started like rolling it up and then yeah, I just, I ended up, yeah. We just had this giant hairball because it became a joke at a certain point because there was just so much hair all over the place. <gasps> yeah, because it's like the whole time during pregnancy, I feel like I've lost probably 10 hairs from my head. Like I just stopped shedding. My hair gets all nice and, and luscious and thick and glowy. And then, oh, that's the other thing. It happens like three months after you get birth. Something to do with that's the cycle of your hair. I don't know, hormones, whatever. It sucks and there's there's nothing you can do about it. You just have to let it fall out and then let it regrow. <laughs> That's like the number one thing I'm not looking forward to, honestly, because it takes such a long time for your hair to grow back. It's like a year until you're finally like, oh, I don't have this weird, awful fringe that I didn't cut. Anyways, going back to the idea of like, just take it really easy and rest. Don't try to work out. Don't. Don't even think about trying to work out. And then even beyond that, a lot of the doctors and everybody says the six week mark is the one that you can like start getting back into exercise. So for me, I know that at six weeks, I like tried to start getting back into working out a little bit because I was feeling better, but I just remember going for a run and my pelvic floor felt horrible. And so then I started doing a bunch of research and like everything that I was reading from like women's physios and everything. Did I say everything a hundred times in that sentence? Anyways. <laughs> They all recommended actually more close to 12 weeks. So a fun thing to keep in mind is just take it super duper easy. You're not in a rush to get back into anything. Like yes, gentle walks and yoga and stuff is great, but like you don't need to be strength training and you don't really need to be running at six weeks postpartum. Just let your body heal. You're doing enough work keeping a baby alive, so. Next. Lastly, don't over-research everything. Because again, in the world of the internet, there is too much information out there. And I think it definitely gets in the way of our natural mothering and parenting instincts. So I know for me, I did a ton of research for like labor prep and having the baby, but I did like next to no research about breastfeeding and about postpartum or like raising the newborn. And it worked out just fine. And I think it just takes away all these weird barriers of the internet stepping in and being like, you should be doing things this way. and and you're doing it wrong if you're trying this. And it's just like, no, you know how to raise your baby. Like people have been doing this for a very, very long time <laughs> before the internet, before experts, like you got this, you know what you're doing. Even if it feels like you don't, you do. But yeah, that is my whole list of postpartum goodies for both physical and mental because both of them are so important together. And if I left anything off the list or if any of the things that I said are like your top favorite things that you would totally recommend, Leave them down in the comments below so that other moms can read them and share their knowledge. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next week. Bye!